Hi, everybody. Uh, well, when, what I'm going to, to talk about is uh, 10 years of uh, poker libraries, Tales of the Underdog. So first question, how many of you have uh, heard of the poker libraries? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. And how many of you actually used it? <laughs> uh, come on! <laughs> well, actually, uh, I started the, the poker project uh, a bit more than 10 years ago. And uh, in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, how this 10 years uh, went for me as uh, basically founder of an open source project. Uh, when I started with the poker libraries, uh, this was actually pretty much the, uh, how it felt uh, starting something new in C++ back then in the middle of the two case. Uh, Java sounds the death knell for C++. We're Java guys, we're going to take over the world and you C++ guys can go hide under a stone. Um, nevertheless, uh, I've always been a big fan of C++ and uh, I always, my, my personal, what was lacking in C++ was it, it wasn't a modern language uh, back then with regards to doing anything that's somehow related to networking and the internet. I mean, there were the ACE libraries back then, which are their own thing. Uh, but if we wanted to do something modern that used back then XML, now it's JSON, uh, wanted to write a web server in C++ or actually talk to a web server, there was pretty much nothing. And that's where I started with the Boku libraries. And as uh, Bjarne said, without a good library, most interesting tasks are, has, uh, tasks are hard to do in C++, but given a good library, almost any task can be made easy. This is somewhat turned into the, the model that we use, the motivation. This is a quick overview of the Boku libraries. For those of you who haven't uh, used it, we have a foundation library which does uh, platform extraction, multi-threading, um, file system, a pretty nice logging library. We have XML and JSON. We have a zip library. We have a pretty extensive network library which build in uh, HTTP client and server, SMTP, uh, sockets of course, a couple of other things. Uh, we have a user library which is kind of a kitchen sink library. Mostly it contains things like dealing with configuration files, dealing with uh, command line arguments, writing server-side applications, things like that. And then we have uh, SSL security cryptographic stuff, which is mostly a wrapper around it, currently the OpenSSL libraries. Then we also have a pretty nice database library. So if you're doing uh, SQL database stuff, uh, you find a lot of that in Boku. We have also uh, libraries for uh, talking to MongoDB databases and uh, um, a new one. <laughs> Forget the damage. <laughs> Just got a new... Uh, uh, contribution to actually talk to a key value data store. So it's been 10 years, actually 11 years since I started working on it. Um, we have oh, about uh, 300k lines of code. Actually, if you take all of Boku, it's more like 600k, but we're using a lot of existing C libraries inside Boku, so that comes from that. More than 1,000 classes. Uh, we are now on GitHub and get about 30 to 50 clones a day. We have uh, 1260 likes or stars in GitHub, uh, 472 GitHub stars, about 100 contributors who over the past 10 years uh, contributed some code to the Boku libraries. Uh, this is the download history since we be began. Uh, we started on SourceForge, where we actually had SourceForge downloads. Uh, ever since we moved to Meetup, we, start, we stopped counting downloads. Uh, so here's a basically history. Um, what you can see here is uh, about end of 2012, we moved to GitHub, and we can see a really sudden improvement in external contributions, uh, which really helped uh, move the project forward. There's also a bit of a hole in there where most of the development actually happened on uh, my private repository, and that would only occasionally uh, push uh, new releases forward to the, the SourceForge repository. But uh, since we moved to GitHub, uh, all of the development actually runs on GitHub. Here is a quick timeline. I started working on it in August uh, 2004. Uh, got the first contributor quickly after the first release, which was in February 2005. Uh, first uh, contributor was uh, Alex, which some, uh, 
is uh, our main contributor today, and he basically also took over the day-to-day the -day running of the community. So uh, my role in Boko now is more of a kind of high-level CEO uh, style. So I, I reserve the final important de decisions for me. Of course, I still contribute code, but I'm not so much involved in running the day-to-day the -day stuff. Yeah, the, the big uh, major step for us was getting actually our first commercial user uh, who used uh, the Boko libraries uh, st uh, starting 2006 uh, in a big uh, project in building automation with more than 100 developers. Half the lot getting uh, credibility. Uh, in 2007, we first uh, exceeded uh, the 2,000 downloads per month. Then it went on uh, to more than 5,000 in 2012. We also made a brief attempt and contributing to the C++ standard. Uh, Alex and I wrote a proposal for an IP address class in, uh, for, the, for one of the upcoming uh, standards. Uh, but it pretty much went nowhere as uh, apparently even a simple thing as a class that holds an IP address can uh, lead to very lengthy and tiring discussions on uh, the committee. Uh, another highlight was uh, in December 2008 when actually Bjarne Strostrup in an interview mentioned the Poco libraries. Felt very good back then. Yeah, and uh, end of 2012, uh, we moved to GitHub, and uh, this has been a huge uh, improvement in, in popularity of Poco. So basically, what, what did I do in, a couple of, in the last uh, 10 years? Basically, my motivation was to create something that I wanted to use. Then I put everything on SourceForge. Um, yeah, choose the right license. license. That's an important step. The first license I used in Boko was uh, kind of a sleepy cat license, which basically said Boko was free for open source project, but required a commercial license for commercial project. But this was changed uh, around 2006 or 2007 or so. And we moved to the boost license, which uh, is very popular, as I know, in the C++ community. Then I also was lucky and uh, found the first contributor about uh, one month after I put uh, Boko out into the wild. Uh, I got people using Boko in commercial projects and also paying for commercial support, which tremendously helps if you're trying to make a living doing open source stuff. Um, we try to put out consistent high quality work over the years, which is, isn't always easy, but uh, yeah, we do the best what we can. And also the goal is uh, to make it easy for new users to get started by providing lots of sample code. Also, what I learned in the, ten, in the last years, the project hosting platform absolutely matters. Uh, contributions when we were at uh, SourceForge were basically very hard to do. Now that we're on GitHub, uh, and anyone who's on GitHub can send a pull request and it really helps getting new stuff into Boko. So what you basically do is try to get more contributors, get paying customers to keep everything uh, running, put out quality releases, and repeat. The, the model that we run, uh, the Boko project, is uh, the benevolent dictator model, basically. So I'm still the final authority when it comes to <laughs> important decisions, and uh, it really Actually, I see my role more of uh, giving the Boko project some kind of focus. Um, you need this, otherwise you end up with a, a kitchen sink project where you get all kinds of different stuff. And, and a lot uh, of uh, troubles can be caused by so kind of uh, fire and forget contributions. So occasionally you get a big chunk of code that should be included in Boko, but then after the code is delivered, the person who wrote the code disappears from the scene and you're left over with a huge chunk of memory that you need to find someone to uh, maintain and, and con continue to improve it. So how we lead the project is actually we are two project leads, uh, that's me and Alex. Um, so we try to make sure that someone who is in charge of the project is always available. We have monthly Skype calls and also try to meet at least once a year. The challenges that we face is yeah, documentation. Uh, writing good documentation takes time, and we don't always have this time. Uh, maintaining sure the quality 
is there. We do this by running uh, continuous integration servers. Yeah, as I mentioned, file and forget contributions. Coding style is a big issue. We have a pretty detailed coding guidelines, and it's sometimes uh, difficult to motivate people to adhere to these coding standards. What we do is uh, continuous integration. We have actually uh, three integration servers. One is TeamCity running in my company, which does builds on all different platforms, also automatic runs of the test suites. We have Travis integrated into GitHub, which is used basically as a first line of defense, and also AppWare, which does the same for Windows platforms. Yeah, and uh, as I'm an open source guy, I tried to do it all over again and uh, started a new open source project uh, this year, which is Machina.io, which actually builds on top of Boko and provides uh, software frameworks and uh, toolkits for writing IoT applications. It also integrates uh, the Google V8 engine, so we also can do JavaScript in addition to Boko. And if you want to learn more about it, you can follow me on Twitter or yeah, just enter my last name into Google and you should find me. <laughs> If you have any questions, I'll be around for the rest of the day. So looking forward to talk to you. Thanks.